pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Elise, would you call the roll? Oh, sure. Uh, Commissioner Rivers? Commissioner Rivers? I can't hear you. Oh. Commissioner Rivers? <laughs> here. Commissioner Flowers? Here. Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Way? Here. Uh, Josh Underwood, I think you have a special guest with you today. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Would you introduce him? Uh, this is my son, Brody. Okay, we're glad to have you with us. <laughs> uh, okay, we uh, need to adopt and approve the agenda. Do I have a motion? Uh, I move to uh, adopt and approve. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. All right, at this time we have public uh, comment. This can be anybody in the, who is not a government official, just anybody from the public. Uh, but I want to say at the beginning that uh, port guests, people who are not government, county, city, state, uh, are limited to five minutes. And we're going to time, Commissioner Way is going to work the timer. And I'd like to say at this time that this is the time for public comment. During the meeting, it's not public comment. Only commissioners, uh, individuals from the government can speak. So you'll have a chance to speak for five minutes now, and you'll have a chance to speak for five minutes at the end of the meeting, but not during the meeting. Okay. You're wrong. Mr. Slavin. Ed Slavin, Box 3084, Cleanup City of St. Augustine.blogspot.com, staugustgreen.com. Under 286.0114, we have a right to meaningful public comment before a vote is taken. Your predecessor, you haven't even been voted in as president or chairman yet, sir, and you're presuming to sit there. First of all, your colleagues have to have a vote under Robert's Rules of Order. So I'm wondering, should I sit down and should there be an election before you arrogate this job to yourself? That is totally wrong. Now, I do have some exciting news today, and that's not that Barry Benjamin resigned, finally, after being an illegal voter voting from a boat and illegally serving as chairman of this board. And it's not that the attorney, who didn't have a contract for nine years, has finally resigned. No, the, the exciting news that I have today is something you probably haven't heard, something you probably haven't even read in the increasingly feeble an incredible shrinking St. Augustine record. I just got off the phone with Dr. Michael Shirley of the Guanatolomato Matanzas National Estuarine Research Reserve. He told me that the NOAA approval of GTM NUR being undivided has gone through. There was a NEPA environmental impact statement. Uh, there was publication in the Federal Register. There were some problems with properly posting it in the Federal Register. Apparently it got lost under the Donald John Trump administration. But I'm delighted to inform you that no longer is the GTM NUR the only NUR in the country with a hole in the middle. And you all know, of course, why the GTM NUR had a hole in the middle. Anybody? Anybody? Well, Bill Lennon explained it to me. He said back in 1998, the burghers of the city of St. Augustine, in their very finite lack of wisdom, thought that we don't want the federal government telling us what to do with our boats. So our government, your government, this government, the city of St. Augustine, there's a hole in the middle. So we weren't gathering data and we weren't doing all the important scientific activities that the GTM NUR was supposed to do. Now, because of your illegal ruling just now about we have to make all our public comment in advance, my dad thought that I had ESP, but that's not fair. You need to take out the arbitration clause. It was wrongfully inserted in the contract with Taylor Engineering. How did that get in there? I understood that the commissioners had specifically said it was not to be included. St. John's County doesn't have arbitration clauses. St. Augustine doesn't have arbitration clauses. St. Augustine Beach doesn't have arbitration clauses. And I understand from one of the commissioners that, did your attorney tell you that arbitration clauses were a good idea? Well, he's wrong. And I would refer you to the 1999, 1989 article that I wrote with uh, Judge James Gwill, the Associate Chief Judge of the U.S. Department of Labor, 
um, in the Judges' Journal, the American Bar Association, a rush to unfairness, the downside to alternative dispute resolution. This board needs to take out that arbitration clause because it's wrong and it's unenforceable. We're the government. The government does not agree to arbitration clauses with private businesses or contractors. It is contrary to public policy. And as Justice William Rehnquist said it best in dissent in Park Lane Hosiery versus Shore way back in 1979, the purpose of the Seventh Amendment right to jury trial is to protect us and be a bulwark against oppression. You've got to be kidding, Mr. Attorney, if you think it's a good idea for a government to have an arbitration clause. It's just wrong. And it's contrary to public policy. St. John's County doesn't allow it. St. Augustine doesn't allow it. But at any rate, there are people who are going to come and speak and want to speak on specific agenda items. We have a right to do so, sir. You haven't even been selected as chairman yet. There are four people here. And each of y'all has a right to vote on the next chair un until the election of this board. And the prior chair resigned in disgrace because I filed a 120 paragraph complaint against him with the supervisor of elections and with the Florida Secretary of State. Barry Mark Benjamin was not a resident of this district and he was not qualified for years to serve on this board. And nobody but nobody wanted to do anything about it. And people were, oh, by the way, it's because of what Dr. Shirley told me just before this meeting. You'll have an opportunity now, and you'll have another opportunity after the election um, in November, at your meeting in November. But the position that Barry Mark Benjamin encumbered for 20 years as the liaison to the Guanatola Mata Matanzas National Estuarine Research Reserve, that position is now vacant. So I would hope that you would designate one of your members to go to those meetings and see, what, see how badly he fouled it up. See, has he ever given you reports on what he did? <clears throat> ever? This board needs to ship up or shape out. You need to comply with the law, including 286.0114, which I insist you comply with. Okay, thank, thank you, you. Mr. Simon. Okay, does anybody else, any other member of the public want to make a comment? Up to five minutes. <clears throat> Last chance. Okay, there'll be another time at the end of the meeting in case something happens during the meeting that you would like to clarify or talk to about. It'll be, you'll be able to talk at that time. Uh, government representatives. Josh Underwood from the Sheriff's Department. Uh, Sergeant Josh Underwood, the Sheriff's Office Marine Operations. Um, just from last port meeting to this port meeting, 141 calls for service, four boating accidents that we assisted with, 12 boaters in distress, nine citations were issued for no life jackets, flares. One of those citations were an MSD discharge overboard, and 28 warnings were issued. That's all I have from the Sheriff's Office side, unless the commissioners have questions for me. What happened to the um, float and free catamaran the other day? Do you know? The uh, floating, floating. Down at the land of Bohemia, south of 312. Uh, it wasn't free floating. It was. It was. Oh, it was sinking. Taken on water on oh, the port I'm side. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, us and FWC and the fireboat got him some portable bilge pumps, and he was able to get that water out of the port side and back floating. What's that? I hear it's a very nice boat. I don't know what it's doing it's, down the road. It's by very itself. nice. Um, why he, they don't put it on a mooring ball? He lives in the south right there where he right. can see it from his house yeah and his admirations are in november he's going to take it to the bahamas to the bah oh, okay. bahamas well, if it's still there i sure hope so for him okay yes ma'am anything else for me all right thank you guys. Thank, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> next Hi there, Sydney Limblad, uh, St. John's County Parks and Recreation. I also Excuse me. It would really help a lot if I could see your mouth moving. Okay. <laughs> it's hard. It's, <laughs> this okay. thing is blocking some of the sound out. Okay. Um, Sydney Limblad, St. John's County Parks and Recreation. Um, I also have Nathan Otter here with me today, too. He's our Natural Resources Superintendent. Um, just a few updates. Our Doug Crane um, project, we are just waiting till after the boating season. Um, so about, uh, around fall, we should start getting that project underway. Um, the pre preliminary um, fine grant results came in um, and we are in line to receive the grants for the Volano Dredge. 
um, and our board did pass the interlocal agreement at our last meeting, so I will have that um, contract here for you all to sign um, upcoming in September. And then the last thing, um, we were budgeted for next year to match find for a $200,000 maritime master plan to look at all of St. John's County and kind of um, some opportunities and where we can enhance our boat ramp. So we will be working on that in the next budget year. Oh, did you say that again? Now, what boat ramp are you talking about there? The for, Volano over, you said? Oh, the Volano, yeah, the Volano um, dredge. Oh, you're talking about dredging, not when you dredge. say enhance the boat ramp. It's not parking related. It's just dredging. The, okay, we've already voted on that. Right, we're voting on that or something. Or? And we um, we were received a grant um, the previous year, so we'll be working on that project this upcoming fall as well. Um, the Doug Crane boat ramp, you all help fund, um, and so we're waiting so until fall. So when they spoke about us helping to dredge over at the Eucena boat ramp, y'all got money for that? We don't need to help y'all dredge over there Lucina. for the next dredging? I'm not sure I'm... Not sure on the Eucena one, but I can. We can come back next month. I can okay, look into I, it. I guess maybe Mr. Teddy, Teddy Meyer here last time. Okay, maybe. Okay. Yeah, I'll touch base with Teddy, and we'll project. have information okay. on that next That's month. Fine. Sure, you. no problem. Thank you. Steve Zukowski, Lieutenant Steve Zukowski, Fish and Wildlife Commission, Local Patrol Supervisor for Coastal Flagler in St. Johns Counties. Um, not a whole lot this month or since our last meeting, um, but uh, I'll go through it. In terms of boating safety, we haven't had any um, <clears throat> major or complex boating accidents, uh, for lack of a better term. We'd have some minor ones, fender benders, stuff like that, but nothing major with major injuries, major damage or anything like that. So uh, that's, um, that's good news. Uh, we've had one boating under influence arrest since then. And also we had the, um, we had the Trump flotilla a couple weekends ago, correct? Yeah, and um, Sergeant Underwood organized the uh, public safety vessels to, to help with the uh, um, maritime security and uh, safety enforcement of that. And uh, that went from 312 uh, up to went up to Palm Valley. Although a lot of the boaters, once they got north of the Eucena Bridge up Volano, they decided to turn around, and they were speeding through the zone. So we probably spent about an hour there saying hello to people after that. But overall, it was uh, like the other flotillas we've had in the area. The one that came down from Mayport to Palm Valley a couple months back. They're organized and they're orderly. Um, so that's a good thing for the most part. And I think there's going to be one or two more in our area on that and that's about it um, boating safety wise <clears throat> resource wise uh, the offshore anglers who have been fishing either for um, bottom fish grouper snapper or uh, Kobe or king mackerel or whatever else is out there they've all we've been checking them on a regular basis particularly Officer Megan Thomas and the new officer Jessica Dodd, and they've all they've all been not all, but the majority of them have been in compliance. Some of them had some nice catches. Some of them have taken pictures of the red snapper they've returned. So uh, that's good news that the majority of them have been in compliance. And the miners, the minor viola there are violations out there, but they're for minor things such as the fish may be an inch or two under the size limit, or it may be something that's. Uh, maybe not the most desirable species, they may have too many of them. So uh, several warnings, not several, but a few warnings were issued. I guess that's several. Several's more than three, whatever it is. So however that standard goes. Um, inshore, blue crabbing has really turned on up at the Guana Dam. That's, they've been doing very well up there for the last two or three weeks. Shrimping is supposed to be turning on up there. I haven't heard anything about shrimping on the St. John's River yet, although that's not really the jurisdiction of this entity here. Uh, and down in Matanzas Inlet, the redfish run is starting a tad early this year, but it's starting, and which means you'll probably be seeing mullet going through there shortly and also possibly some shrimp. And usually when a redfish run hits, it usually, it's usually in September, early October. Um, we'll also see some snook mixed up in there once in a while. And there have been people fishing the bridge like, uh, um, you know, like it's the redfish run because last weekend I was out and I was up with Officer John Young and Bill Miller on their boat and we could not find a span to get under it. It didn't have lines all over it. And bridge of lines, you say? No, the Matanzas Bridge, oh. US-1. 
And I don't know if you've ever tried to do that, but when you've got the tide working against you and you're trying to get under there and you've got lines that are going to try to get caught up in the prop of your boat, it's not the best thing. So we managed to get through there. I had to, uh, I had to speak to a few people in a command voice to get them to pull their lines up, but eventually they did. Uh, but it, it's been packed on that bridge, so that's further evidence of... Uh, but so far, we haven't had any violations yet, but I'm sure as the, it goes on, we'll probably find some sooner or later. Uh, hopefully, most of those fishermen will be in compliance also. Uh, and that is about it. The, I don't know if I told the board we have a new officer, Jessica Dodd. She started her field training program about, uh, about almost two months ago. She's doing well. She's progressing. She's getting ready to go to phase two. So she's about halfway through her training. And when she's through with her training, or maybe next month, I will present her to you, or she will present herself to you and tell you a little bit about herself. But she's um, a local young woman who's, I think, born and raised here. And she's doing well, and I think she's going to fit in uh, with what this. What was her name again? Well. Jessica Dodd. D-O-D-D. -D. She goes by Dodd or JD, but I'm sure she'll tell you all that. And if she doesn't want to, then I'll probably encourage her to tell you about herself. So you should probably see her next month or in October at the latest. So that's all I have. Did, did they change any of the rules on flounder? Yes, they did. You oh, know what it is? Yeah, I should. They did. Um, and I don't know off the top of my head, but it wasn't. Is it a limit or a It was size? a bag limit. I uh, know it was a size limit, I think. Size limit. I'll have to look it up. But thank you. Yeah. One of my officers told me about that a couple weeks ago. I didn't know what the details are. And I can, I, can find, I can find it on my phone and, and let you know. Okay. Uh, you know. Sometime later on the meeting, I'll look it up. But yes, they did. Uh, it's unusual because typically our agency, not so much the Fed, federal government, NOAA, but with our agency, they... They don't, change, they don't change the rule in midstream. We usually wait until July 1 or January 1. We usually pick one of those time periods. Whereas with the federal government, with NOAA, something comes out of the blue and it's changed next thing you go out there and it was changed yesterday or three hours ago. But thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, I'll look it up and I'll, yeah. I'll, get, I'll get back to you on that. All right, anything else? Uh, just a question. Um, we, had talk thank you. Uh, we had talked briefly about... Um, the Hospital Creek? Um, Correct. No wait zone. And you had told us that, uh, that you needed a government sponsor, basically. To, a government sponsor would have to contact the FWC to get the... Oh, to make, to make that the a... no wait zone. A, 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 Not the a, a restricted boating zone. Um, yeah, it's called boating safety zone. Okay. Restricted uh, speed. And I will say, I do drive fast on boats. I like that. Okay. And I also know that boats stop very fast in the water, but Hospital Creek is getting a little crazy. Um... And here's the thing, I can't go out in the neighborhood without people accosting me, so I have to ask you these questions. Okay. Um, if we need, what we need to do, the no-wake zone, once you get deep into the creek, say before you hit the docks, not the whole way in, but just before we, to do that, we would need a government sponsor, and would that have to be the city, or could it be the port authority? And, and, and it, well, it would be a city ordinance, you're within the city limits. Okay, so. So you have to work with someone at the city. Okay, so. I, I okay. will tell you this. And Sergeant Underwood knows this because he's going through some of this down in Matanzas, right? That review down there. Um, it is not easy to get a boating or er restricted uh, boating zone, either slow speed or idle speed, right. in an area that is either not near a marina with a fueling station right. or a boat ramp, like a well, county boat okay. ramp. And what if that little kayak ramp were to pass, whether it be now or in the next? Uh, would have a better chance. After, if that, if, that, it, were to if that was either stood up already or about to be stood up when you put your application in, would be very you, you'd have a better chance. But the zone may be just restricted 500 feet east and west of the A18 road right there. You know, um, you know, right. towards a school for deaf and blind. I'll just and give it a little zone docks. of restriction. It might right. give you a little bit. So that may that may work for you. Um, but typically, it's usually a. Um, uh, a public boat ramp and or a marina that has fueling facilities on the intercoastal waterway. That, uh, since that is Hospital Creek, FWC would not be the, FWC would not be the, um, the agency that would 
uh, assign an administrative code to it. It would have a permit from FWC and be reviewed by us per request of the city of St. Augustine. It would have a, then it would have a uh, permit number and a county ordinance as to what a violation would be, whether it was slow oh, speed or okay. idle speed. So, so that needs to be done through ordinance to the city, not through the port. Cor correct. Cause, okay. Yeah, because you guys don't have... We actually have regulatory authority. Yeah, well, but do you have... I have I've never seen a port ordinance anymore. I know, we've never used it, but the charter is an amazing okay. uh, document. We've just well, never used it. But it sounds like the easiest way anyway would just be to... You, know, you might want to get up with Chief Fox or whoever his representative, whatever his commander's for that, and start talking to them first. Okay. Um, Sergeant Jerry Whitehead is their Marine um, officer. So um, he hasn't been here in a long time. Does he, I don't even know if he comes anymore. But uh, Sergeant, you could start with Sergeant Jerry Whitehead and go go that way. And one last little thing I have for okay. you is, you know the fishing wall at the end of Pine Street that is in Hospital Creek? When yes, you yes, fishing yes. Wall? Just to give you a little note, and I know that uh, y'all have done it before, but, but people take the smallest fish from there. You wouldn't believe what they take out of there. Just a little note. I mean, they'll see cooler fools of, and there's no sense to say anything on my side because then they'll shoot me. But there's a lot of taken from that wall that's really undersized. Yeah, that's that's one of those areas where our officers, we don't really patrol that too often on a truck, and maybe we should, uh, on, I mean, on land. When we're, when we're in there by boat, you know, everyone's under best behavior because oh, they sure. see us coming from a mile away. But that is one of probably a handful of areas around the county where we have a lot of sustenance fishermen people. Yes, yeah. And, but you're right. But um, to take some of the coolers I saw, uh, yeah. I'm not sure some of it wasn't going directly to certain restaurants uh, that use that type of thing, but it was it was pretty bad. Cool, well, and like I said, you couldn't do a thing. I guess you see they backed the truck up to the wall. Yeah, so well, everything's in the truck, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, good poachers are organized poachers. Right. I will tell you that from doing this for a long time. But uh, that's something I can mention to my officers. I'm going to be having a squad meet with them soon. Okay. So, and that's an area I can put out an email to them to. When they're in the area, coming or going from Comanche Cove, just pop in there. And thank you for your, um, the girls that come over to check the bird, the, uh, the nesting, the least turn estuary that's on Bird Island. Oh, the shorebirds. Yeah, they come in there yeah. at the corner. There's a great gals. They do a good job. Yeah, that's, um, that's if, if the two women officers, that's Officer Thomas, and that's the new officer, Jessica Dodd. Uh, I, I would on, like that job. They've been, <laughs> on the water. they've been on the water quite a bit because yeah. we're trying to get her boating handling skills up, and she's doing well. Yeah. But they've been a presence out there just about every day. They've been on patrol, so they're, that's, they're, that's encouraging. Yeah, they I'll came pump. and caught a hawk. The, uh, I think it was some of your guys because mm -hmm. a hawk was going through the babies like crazy and relocated them. Yep. They said it's doing very well. That's it. Thank I'll you. I'll pass it on. Yes, All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Secretary, Treasurer's Report, Elise. Um, City Police Law Enforcement Overtime of the 8,000 committed. We've spent 1,973 to date. Um, we do have till September 30th to finish our budgeted year. The St. John's County Sheriff's Overtime 20, of the 20,000 committed, we've spent 11,039. The derelict boats, we've spent 20,637 of the 20,000, I'm sorry, the 25,000 that was budgeted. Um, in the Florida State Board of Administration, uh, Fund A, we have $23,117. In the operating account, we have 125762 and in the money market, we have two million two hundred and eighty-three thousand seven hundred and forty-two. Um, for the taxes budgeted for the tax year for 2019 to September 30th, 2020, we budgeted five hundred and seventy thousand six hundred and thirty-four. We've received five hundred and sixty-five thousand four hundred and forty-nine dollars to date. We're ex um, expected five thousand one eighty-five. If we see that, this was a very odd year. I'm surprised we saw what we saw come in um, for taxes. And that's it. The next meeting, though, on the September meeting, we're going to have a, our first public hearing is going to be September 15th, which is our regular meeting, and then our first public hearing where you're going to decide which um, millage rate you want to use. 
And that'll be at 5.05. 5.05. 5.05, mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Lisa, did you ever find out, I thought, again, we, I'd question it in a special meeting, I thought we needed a super majority. Did we ever find out about that, about the last meeting when we voted to increase the taxes? Well, it wasn't, it was only voted for a temporary, just just to give something to the Department of Revenue. Right. It's I know, not to is, vote is to it not correct taxes? that when we call a special meeting to do anything, we need a super majority? It's, it was. It was two out of three. That's it. Okay. There was only three of you there. That is the majority. That's counted. Okay. That's it's not counted. out of that's the five not, that exist. No, no, no. It's, it's just whoever happens to correct. show up. Okay. Correct. <clears throat> Any other questions for Elise? Uh, Elise, I wonder, this is something I've been thinking about for a while, and for those of you who are not familiar, I was the vice chairman when uh, Barry Benjamin, the chairman, resigned, and I'm acting chairman until the election in uh, December. November. November. Okay. Uh, but sometimes uh, governmental people will come before us requesting funds on the spur of the moment. We have no foreknowledge about that. And it's, if everybody else would agree, I would like to uh, ask Elise if she could let the, all the governmental agencies that we deal with, if they want to have a monetary item, to submit it to us at least one week before the meeting. Most of them have already come through, I think, and have requested funding in July and June and may have requested funding for the upcoming year. There might be only a couple left, but I can certainly- Are you talking about like the red folder thing with that reef out there that showed up out of the blue for us? Well, so sometimes they'll just show up and say, you know, we need this question. additional we funding. We shouldn't do that. I, I agree I'd with like that. I'd like to know ahead yeah, of time. I, I agree so with that too. I think that's a great idea, Tom. Yeah. yeah, but most of the time they do come in and mm. they request funding and you've, uh, I have a list of what you've already agreed to, well, but then, well, I can call the government. Well, that red agencies. folder was really disconcerting to me. It was like flashing some kind of sign. We were supposed to, you know, railroad that through. I really didn't understand that. So I definitely agree with Ms. Rivers if we could, nothing would get talked about if they didn't give us, if it's not on the agenda and it involves money. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Rivers? Yeah. If we're going to give money away, it has to be on the agenda. Okay. I can't hear you. No, I know what you're that. saying. Is that what you're saying, that if we're going to discuss giving our money away, it must be on the agenda seven days ahead of time? That would be good, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, they should let that us not know come if they're going I mean, to come in. But I would money. like to have the information about what they're requesting so we can think about it by the time we get here and then cast an intelligent vote. I think it, I think the agenda is required to be posted seven days ahead. And actually on the website is, you know, the form that they did for uh, requesting funding, you know, uh, it's on the website. They, they, it's a form that they can- Our uh, website. Our website, yeah. that they can download and print and fill out and then send to me, which I would then send to all of you and then put it on okay. the agenda. Okay, for those of you who don't know, it's stainaugustineport.com. The grant application that's on yeah, that's grant you, yeah, application. Grant application. Yeah, for anybody who yeah. that would be super nice because nobody ever feels so that and we don't have any in our records. So if the somebody wanted to know what the grant that application really gives a very full yes. And and I think Chris Pacetti <clears throat> from the fire department he has filled those out before. Um, he has, and I think somebody else has before. This was a while ago. Well, I'm not saying that they never do, but then sometimes right. People spring stuff on us, you know, at the last minute. That's just what I want to try to avoid. Yeah, yeah, okay. I have one last question, Elise, about the auditor's report. Can you talk to us about their, um, their insistence that, again, the secretary treasurer cannot be the person who keeps the book and must be bondable? They're requesting that. They didn't say it's demanding it. Oh, but right, they, but that's they, why, yeah, I think this think it's required. See, again, the, that's why they're, can we get them to come and do a, to give us an in-person I can call, I can call, um, call Because they probably or, want you to do that for a reason. Again, um, the person who signs the checks can't be the same person who keeps the books. And most um, little special district like ours simply elects a, um, one of the commissioners to be the secretary treasurer because that person is usually well, that, already bondable. I know four of our commissioners are not bondable. But that's how people do it in other places rather than giving, you can see the problem. It, it's truly illegal for you to do that. No, it is not okay. illegal. Okay, okay. 
you keep the books and sign the check and out the door it goes what they, without I, anybody. I don't sign the checks myself. No, no, no. They're That's two okay. According to the auditor's two report, signatures on those. According checks. to the auditor's report, they are saying that you have agreed not to do that anymore. If you just have them come in and talk to us and present okay. this year's report direct, sure. Would that, I will, do I, I need to do a motion on that? I will call. Do I need them. to do a motion or? Can we just agree to? I will call them. We just agree. That's fine. Okay. Talk. All right. Approval of the minutes of June sixteenth, twenty twenty, and July twenty fifth, twenty twenty meetings. Is there a motion to approve these minutes? Are there any additions or corrections? First. I would like to say, sir, that um, when you get me the minutes of a meeting that happens, you always get these minutes right like the day before we come to this meeting. It's been a month. Unless I took full notes or recorded it myself, I, can't, I cannot vote that these are correct because I can't remember a month later. I need to get minutes within at least a week of when the meeting was so I can read over and have some kind of a memory. I'd have to take notes of everything that was said to make sure it was, so I can't vote on the minutes this month. You can't get them to me that late and expect me to know if they're right. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I can move to approve the June 16th minutes. I was not here for July 25th, so I can't vote on those minutes. Okay, which one are, which one are you moving to approve? I'll move to approve uh, June 16th. Okay. Well, I wasn't here. What's that? that meeting. Oh, I wasn't here. Okay. So. Okay, your motion is to approve the June 16th right. minutes. All right. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Okay, the motion passes. What about July 25th? That was rather short. It's, it's only two, two out of four people here passed the motion. I thought when it was even, it failed. Well, Chris can't vote on it. Only three people so can only vote three, on it. It only counts as three? I believe so. Yes, ma'am. We they, wouldn't they, know. We wouldn't know. What about the July 28th meeting? 25th. 25th? 28th? I put the wrong date on there. Okay, do you want me to uh, postpone the July 28th meeting until put the, the August date. meeting? Put the wrong date on it. Say again now? We're in the August. Well, we do not have a motion to approve the minutes of the July 28th meeting. That was just the meeting where we... Okay. Uh, you uh, do you need me? I can make a motion to approve those. Okay, I was thank there. you. Is there okay. a second? Somebody make a motion? Yes. Sandy made the Sandy motion. Sandy made the motion. Is there a second? Yeah. It was just me and you and Barry there, wasn't it? No, Chris? I'm not sure if I was here. Let me check this real quick, guys. I, the motion. I was out west. The motion is to approve the minutes of the July 28th meeting. 20, 28th or? 28th. 28th. 25th. Yes, I was here. Is there, a, is there a, a second? I'll second it. Okay, motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Goodness. Engineering report. Ken? Yes, sir. Uh, so, since last meeting, I have, uh, we've done no engineering work. I, I, we have done, a, have built a few hours to address some uh, records, excuse me, records requests from Commissioner Flowers, which I got about halfway through this and, and it dawned on me and I figured I'd bring it up at, and get your opinion as the board um, because it does ultimately expend funds from the board and it, it, I, it was a request that I received from a lease uh, at that, it, of an email that uh, Commissioner Flowers had sent to a lease and requested that we, we pull these uh, items from our records. Um, that's one commissioner. I don't think the board had ever voted on it. It's expending uh, funds, and I, 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 I just want to make sure those that all that's, day long when you ha that's a simple public request, records for records, I, and you have to if, abide if, by I have it. no problem answering okay. the, the, it, and, and that's not a I just want to make sure that we are all in agreement that that's, that's the, the We process. don't have to be. I can ask for those records. I could be living out there on the road and ask oh, for Oh, where does records. that end, then? What, I it's mean, a, they're public records, sir, I, whether I, I'm a commissioner fine. or not. I, I, and and they, you are wholeheartedly entitled to them. Yes. But it does cost 
It shouldn't. We should have, if we had the records in our office and they were all organized, it'd That's be like this. Like asking for a contract shouldn't take forever. It should be right there in the thing. Here it is. So, and you send it all over. So how much did you bill us for those records requests? I, 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 it was an hour or two, perhaps, but it was okay. also some uh, of our uh, accounting time as well. The, we so let's get a total. Why don't you send us a total bill for It'll this It'll be in the next invoice. Okay. At least, would you make sure you send me a copy of what it cost us to get, because we don't have a, anyway. So it, what I'm looking for is direction from the board. Is that the, that the way you guys want to, uh, when there's a request that comes in like that without the board voting on it, to move forward with that? I, I, it's fine with me if that's the way we want to do this, but I, I've given all of the uh, problems, challenges we've had here with, uh, recently. I just want to make sure that we're all above board and that's the, that's the direction you guys want to go. I don't know, uh, Jim, what's... So well, uh, the contract is for services that he does for the district. If he has to do services on behalf of the district, he should be allowed to charge for the services. Speak louder, please. And on behalf of the district. And, uh, Ken, it would seem to me that if it's in the contract, you know, for the services, like our attorney pointed out, then it's just, we're going to have to pay you for that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And I think everybody here will agree to that. I mean, I realize some of these things that come up are a little over and above what most of us uh, need from you, because you give a report every month. But if Commissioner Flowers or Commissioner Way or anybody, me, demand extra services, then you'll just, we're just going to have to pay you. I'm sorry, say, I, say that again. He's a great yeah. I do think that paying engineer and accounting prices to get a records fulfillment is really, really bad. I'd just rather have all these records ourselves. Like, again, we don't have a single, not a single grant application in our records. And look at all the money we've spent. So yeah, I'd love to have just all your records in our thing and we don't have to bother you. But I send my request through a lease sure. and it's up to her to, to get whatever I need to. Uh, and I think what I have to say later in the meeting will make it very clear why I'm asking for those records. Okay. Is there anything else? That's all I have. What about the contract? Oh, the contract, yes. The contract is, uh, we've had the, uh, uh, Mr. Bedsall and I have gone through, it's been ready for a couple months. We've uh, implemented the changes that uh, the board had requested. Board requested a two-year term. We did that. And the um, fee schedule uh, has been revised to, re to indicate two years. And also there was a change requested. And uh, a notice of claims period has been stretched out to 30 days. Has everybody had a chance to look over the contract? Not the most recent, except to see that the arbitration that I said, you know, again, no, no government agency would accept that. I can't understand why a port order would allow you to put that in there when it wasn't in there in your last contracts. That was added because of all the problems we've been having with Taylor Engineering. Mr. Um, Brown, you know, when you noticed that they were only giving us 48 hours to um, advise them of a breach of contract or we yeah. wouldn't have a breach, has, have you had a chance to look at that and make sure that's going away? Yes, ma'am. They've rectified that. Okay. Did you did you look at it, the most, most recent one? I have, yeah. I've also had a chance to take a look at some uh, material that the county has, uh, has put out. Uh, you know, the county contracts with Taylor as well, and I've found a couple different instances in which the county has um, adopted by ordinance, uh, essentially made an ordinance that said that the county administrator was allowed to hammer out specific contract terms with Taylor, but one of the things that they demand is never in a contract with engineers, including Taylor and other engineering, uh, engineering firms, excuse me, is a mandatory uh, binding arbitration clause. So uh, in light of that, I would be fine with the contract as is, as long as the arbitration clause is taken out. I. You know, I, I would be amazed if it ever came up. I really don't see that ever happening. But the idea of being laxer uh, than the St. John's County Commission uh, <laughs> doesn't sit very well with me. Um, so uh, I would also be in favor, uh, uh, as Commissioner Flowers is, of, of uh, axing that arbitration clause from the contract. Um, otherwise, though, it, it looks fine to me. Another thing I'd like to say is until this contract is signed, Mr. King Craig, you have no contract. That's exactly correct, ma'am. You um, have you a vote 
to sign a contract when it's approved. You have a vote by this board to proceed with your contract. You have no contract. The last contract you had is actually expired February the 19th of 2019, so well over a year ago. Uh, and yet, without that contract, you went and spent port money to fix a, uh, a marker. So what's up with that? You're spending port money without a contract. Just can't be done. We have the, when you do that, and now I've got some questions about the money that was spent, that leaves the taxpayers with nothing. We've got a fellow with no contract, you might as well be me, going out there spending port money, and I, I guess Barry Men Benjamin told you it was okay. <laughs> and that was done right before we were ready to meet again. Nothing was that important. I, again, I have a list, we'll talk about it, but um, please take the arbitration out. I don't imagine that taking the arbitration is going to be out, is it going to be an issue, but I do want to run it by our attorney as of well. Of course, so, of course. So, so until you have that one. signed contract from our... I'll be happy to get up and leave, ma'am, if that's... that's Sir, what you do what you need. To, uh, we've got, uh, you refer to I, our attorney, I mean, but we, you have no contract to work for this board, and it's not just expired, it's terminated according to our, our charter. It terminated when it was never reviewed. I've had. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. I'll, I'll Thank you for coming, ma sir. When the board is ready to uh, move forward with the contract, I'll work through it. Uh, please let me know. Um, it's been 30, almost 30 years that we've been working and for the board. And that's unforgivable. One engineer in for for the and government for 30 years. Um, and it's been a lot of fun for most of this Brown. time, i got to admit. So thank Excuse you. Me, Are you, uh, Are you suggesting to move the entire Section 25. Uh, is that the mandatory binding arbitration section? Uh, I believe let me so. ask, uh, I don't have the attorney, contract in front of me, so I can tell you Let me ask our attorney something. Um, don't most contracts have an arbitration, uh, a dispute resolution procedure in it? Yeah, it's got a mediation. I know procedure. as a realtor, we it's in our, our contract for purchase and sale. Um, so how important is it to keep it in there? Keep binding arbitration in there? Yeah, the dispute resolution procedure. Well, arbitration is a trial before arbitrators instead of in a court. Uh, that's why it's in there, because it's cheaper. Uh, and the... What? What did you say? The contract already has uh, required mediation, and then after mediation comes arbitration. And arbitration... Uh, uh, involves usually uh, filing a lawsuit too. So, finding arbitration just means that you. It's not the court, does it? I mean, it's, in other words, we don't get a, a, a jury to determine. Is that correct? You wouldn't necessarily get a well, jury whatever. anyway. It's just, I don't. I've never heard of arbitration where it, I mean, it only benefits the person in the catbird seat. It doesn't. It never benefits the people who get offended. Well, in construction so we laws, talked about that a whole lot at last meeting. That's just my opinion. Arbitration. If you don't want it in there, it doesn't have to be in there. Uh, All right. Well, the, apparently Matt, the engineers that a, have a different a, opinion. Is that a motion? Yeah, I would move to uh, adopt the contract, but sans the arbitration clause. Uh, otherwise, I think it's I think it's good. But I, the arbitration clause just doesn't need to be in there. I, it's I think it is uncommon for government entities to be stuck with my mandatory binding arbitration. I know the county does not allow it in their own engineering contracts. I'm pretty sure the city doesn't as well. Um, I, I think that we should preserve our right to a day in court uh, in this but issue. But shouldn't there be a dispute resolution procedure? Well, the dispute and resolution would just be... For almost all contracts. Well, the dispute resolution would just be you go to court. You know, a standard section court. of this, then, do you... Don't interrupt us. He's not interrupting me. Don't worry about it. Um, the dispute resolution in this case would just be going into a trial court and suing for breach of contract. It would be, you know, that's that's the backstop for all contracts. You only add a dispute resolution section if you uh, if you're envisioning some alternative dispute. Um, occasionally, you'll have a, a provision in a contract that requires a particular venue or a particular choice of law. There's but otherwise, something should be put in to replace that. Is no, that I don't think anything needs. No, nothing needs to be put in to replace it. You can just remove it. There's a second to that motion. Now wait before you before you vote. Let me explain. The arbitration is in paragraph 25D, not in the whole paragraph. The rest, right. of, it, the rest of it's mediation. The rest of it's mediation. And mediation is completely fine too. Yeah, I would I would just strike the requirement for arbitration. That out. Okay. Yes, sir. 
Because you're going to you're going to go to mediation before you go to trial anyway. Yes. They're going to demand. The court would order that, yeah. wouldn't they? Anyway, most of the time. Trial, trial no, not necessarily. That's different yeah. than arbitration. I mean, they they require you go to mediation. You did something wrong, really wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, just to make I'll this clear, which section here. are you proposing to be removed? Sounds like it's 25E. Is that right, Jim? D. 25D. Excuse me. Yeah. 25D as in dog, right? Yeah. Okay. So your motion is to improve it if we remove paragraph 25, section D. Yes, sir. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The motion carries. <clears throat> um, new business. A, discuss letter to ethics committee, Commissioner Flowers. Yes, sir. This is um, regarding the what I've come to call the saga of uh, marker number three. And first, I just want to run down very quickly the list of what I observed in my short 18 months here, and then I will tell you what I have found out about that list. First of all, back in February of 2019, there had been two markers that had been down for three months, and I want to make that known that when markers were down in Salt Run for three months, nobody on this board called it an emergency. So we paid $10,500 to repair those two markers. Barry approved 4,000 of that himself while he was sitting here on this board, while we could have all voted for it. And then we approved the additional what was left over, which I thought was very strange. Again, that a, a chairman would approve $4,000 of a, of a money request while we were sitting here ready to vote on it. That's number one. Second time we got a report, marker number three is down again. $6,500 for just the one marker. When, when was that, Sandy? I'm sorry, sir? So what, what date was that? Or that what was a few months later. I would have to look. I do have the actual month, but just these are just my random notes okay. of the three times. So the second occurrence, which was, again, I think about four to six months later, $6,500. Um, and at that time, we had all received the email from law enforcement, said we had a down marker just like we did before. But uh, before we went any further, Mr. Chris Way um, had contacted Bacon already before we met, had received a quote from them, and had um, presented this estimate to the board for a vote. And we were told at the time that there was no other company who could do that. So we, what, I complained bitterly that repairing a marker is $700 to $1,200, and we paid $6,500 for it. But what could we do? Now, so that's the first two times. Then after COVID hit, and I thought that this marker was, uh, when we first came back from COVID in May, was the very first time we found out that here, marker number three was repaired again for the third time. And at that point, wait, what, 15, 16 months. Apparently, according to what I've been told, that Barry Benjamin authorized Taylor Engineering to order the repair of this marker at $9,500 for a single marker. And that he, the both of the, this all happened just about nine days before we were getting ready to meet again and could have voted on it all together. It was almost a hurry to run do that spending before the board got a chance to vote on it. Here's my question. I contacted both of our full-time law enforcement officers on the road, and neither one of them reported a broken marker for that May repair. After sending an email to the port in May to discuss that I had gone on to Mr. Bacon Marine's website, and he had absconded our port seal, and all over his website he was promoting that he was a preferred vendor for the port, and I sent an email to the port saying, you know, that's wrong. Everybody here knows that's wrong. Well, Mr. White took it upon himself to call up Bacon Marine and negotiate with him to remove that and told him don't do that anymore. That was the port's job to do that. You uh, negotiated for the port a legal matter on your own. I didn't negotiate anything. Okay, let me finish, please. Uh -huh. 
you did you you told this is all in the public record, Mr. Way. You put on the public record that you called him up and told him to take and told him to take it, it down. Okay. I didn't negotiate. That's fine. You negotiated his removal. That's what it's called when you say, "Look, you can't do this. It's wrong. Stop doing this." Now, let me finish, please. Lord. So this is what actually occurred on my list. But then the what happens is the very last meeting you weren't here, Mr. Um, you guys, a couple people weren't here. Mr. Way then reads a statement to the board saying he doesn't even know Mr. Bacon. I don't. But you, uh, the month before you had had a conversation on the phone with him. Okay. Let me finish. Okay, go ahead. The month before that, you had called and negotiated a $6,500 uh, price. And then when you told us, you told us on the last meeting, you said, no, no, no. I didn't negotiate a price and bring it to the board. You said, I just called him and gave him the phone number and let, no. This is on the public record. Not in the minutes, but it certainly is on the recording. You came here with a price, you presented it, and the problem, sir, is you never one time told this board that you do business with this man, that this man does business with your company, the no, pro no profile boat lifts, it's all over the website, that he does business with you, and you have funneled money into his business without ever telling us that you have anything to do with them. Are you done? And he gives you, I'm not. Okay, keep going. And he gives keep you money. Digging. No, I don't. No, this is not for me to dig any longer. digging. This is for the Keep inspector digging. general to look at. Dig as deep as you want. But let me just look here. Here's my question: Why do you think Barry Benjamin sat here with a whole board that could have approved the expense and did four thousand dollars of his own? Because I called the inspector general about that over at the um, Department of Economic Opportunity, and that's the form of government that we lie underneath. He says this. And so does the AG. I've already brought you guys a paper a couple of meetings ago that the AG has determined that this board cannot assume a single bit of authority not given to it in our charter. And according to the Inspector General, we can't take a vote to allow any one of us to spend money on our own. And this is what he says. When there's an emergency situation, the state enables us to call an emergency meeting to take a vote. And that emergency meeting does not have to have the seven-day notices and stuff. But it never, anywhere, can you find where it gives anybody on this board the permission to spend money without a vote. And that's been going on over, and it's gone on right here in front of us. There so a, we're in so much trouble. There with is the, a resolution. We, ah. the, the resolution cannot give, you cannot pass a resolution that gives you the authority to spend money. Only the legislature can do that. No, sir. The board can spend money as a whole. An individual cannot pass, you cannot pass a resolution given the chairman or anybody else the right to spend board's money without a vote. Now, that came from the inspector general of the DEO that we lie underneath. Sure, there's a resolution. I saw your resolution that you passed. <clears throat> this is what the inspector, let me finish. This is what, I saw it, sir. And I'm telling you, the inspector general says, About six thousand dollars. let me finish. Let, let me finish. It's my time to okay, talk. You finish. I'm yeah. not finished. Go ahead. The inspector general told me, you cannot vote that in yourself. The board cannot vote in a measure that allows them to spend money not in this charter. Not to spend money. You can vote in a resolution charter. so that you can achieve the charter. But you, let's, this is what they said to me. If you can vote in that your chairman can spend $4,000, you can vote in he can spend $40,000 or $400,000. This board cannot do that. The legislature must do it. And I know you're not, you've quit as a lawyer, so I don't know what's going on here. And I've already seen the resolution. I'm telling you, the resolution is illegal. It's and that's been illegal according, for 18 years then. It, yes, sir, it has. There's a lot of things y'all have done illegal. You know that. And why, is, why has anybody been arrested? Because they don't know about it. You do everything you can. Flowers, let's let, let, let me hear from you. I was attorney. answering his question. Just, let, me, let me hear your response, please. You're just he just asked at. me why, and I was okay. answering the question. Okay, just a second. Jim, let me go ahead. Well, I'm just explaining that the resolution has been in place for purposes of replacing, for replacing markers in Salt Run we know that, since sir. 2002 uh, because it's a recurring emergency situation when a marker comes out and it's floating sir, around. Sir, it's the a funnel tank. into, it's do a you funnel. Mind, do you mind? It's a hazard to navigation. That's why it's called an emergency. That's why this resolution was passed. The board's charter gives broad authority to the board to spend money for the purposes of keeping safe regulating and improving 
every bit of water in the district and uh, having a, a, a blanket amount to spend for, um, or maximum amount to spend for emergency situations is not uncommon. That has to be approved by the legislature. That's what I have spoken to him, sir. You haven't spoken to anybody, and you don't even look this up. Right. And you have already resigned as our attorney. Right. Right. What are you doing doing that to me? Just a what are you doing popping me when I'm in the middle of a sentence? Just because you don't like what I say. Just a minute. I'll tell you what. It's not going to be long. What I'm trying to do is to keep a little don't order. Don't you dare stop me from a legitimate time. I have to speak. Okay. I'm representing taxpayers. You don't like it. You start banging your gavel. You're just... I'm uh, in this chair. You're... you're I'm mad because of what's going on. Let me tell you something. Just because you, who have no government experience, keep telling this board it's okay, does not for one second mean that it's legal. Believe me, well, I've had real live lawyers looking at this, and you know what? You're going to get your comeuppance. Well, where are they? Commissioner Flowers. No soon, sir. Let's have some decorum here. Oh, so my whole point of bringing this up, now I've, I've shown you the list. I've told you that. I've please, spoken to please, come on. I'm trying to you're, get what I, I... I brought this up to try to make... You are list. belaboring the point. Her speech. May I finish? Totally. I don't really want you to finish because I well, think you're belaboring the point of bringing the data to you was to ask if I could... Over and over and over again. No. I'm and answering it's not doing questions. any good. If you keep bringing up what lies to me, I'm not going to sit there. I overheard you, sexist pig. What money was spent was spent like... I what? would like to say why I brought this information up now. <clears throat> I brought this information up because, of, again, again, if the inspector general of the government over us says we can't do it, Maybe we should look into something yeah. besides... Would you do me a favor, again, right Commissioner Flowers? I'm do... trying to get to the point of why I brought this You've up. You've gotten the point across. We, you're not even the chairman. <laughs> you know, we've got four people. Why don't we elect the chairman right now? I mean, you are taking huge authority. Why don't we elect... There's no reason we don't elect the chairman I'm right trying now. to keep order during the you meeting. Know, I'm trying we to get to the point I made. We don't need to have this hollering like well, you do. I'm finish the point you're, I'm trying know, to make. Why I brought up... I all this. A, no, I'm going to make my point. I have on the agenda and I'm going to make my point. This board powers, needs to move forward as a board to, help to have the state come in and see what in the hell is going on. We need to have this moment removed. <laughs> the next election. <laughs> what I want to see. Listen, I'm I trying. I live that long. Y'all give me a Flowers, I'm trying to talk to you. Will you listen to me? Would you get that in writing from whoever is as far as... Let me ask you something. Why can't you... This is just like bad management. Why am I the only one that can call up the owner of a marina and say, hey, does Barry Benjamin live there? And the owner say, no, he's never lived here, not in 20 minutes. Order. Why am I the only one? Order, please. I've belabored the point, but thank you for your input. Huh. Let's go down to old business. Wow. Okay, Commissioner Flowers, discussion, update, vote on the May Street boat ramp for kayak launch. We've already presented, I've presented it to you guys twice, we're just voting for it as well, <coughs> my understanding. I thought, that you, weren't you supposed to take a meeting with another agency at some I point? I did though? all that, I've, I've already met, and I've, when I came in and presented anything, I'd already met with the FDOT. <coughs> well, have you they, talked to, was it DEP was I've the next called, one? Well, Officer, uh, Lieutenant Zerkowski suggested I call the DEP in Jacksonville, and this repair is not required to have Doesn't any type of permits any permit? or anything from the DEP. Oh, that's interesting. So w the next thing to move forward is just to what? Get well, an engineering report? First of all, the, the commission would have to agree to move forward, and then I have to go to the city, mm -hmm. and the city um, sends it over to Public Works. They have a meeting every two weeks. Mm -hmm. Public Works decides, you know, they give us a go-ahead, yay or nay on it, even though we own the land. It's just like you still got to get a permit. So when you say send it over to the city, you just mean a very basic proposal? Still, yeah, because we like, we're doing our fill work, mm -hmm. even though there's nothing... They just, anything like that, just, when I went and talked to Public Works, they want us to run it through their Public Works, and besides, I thought if it did somehow by miracle get approved, um, they might want to throw in a palm tree or trash can. So the next thing we need to do then, one of us needs to go to one of those Public Works meetings, If too, we right? get it approved, once okay. it's approved at the commission, then we need to also approve perhaps someone to take it, okay. you know, to a city um, um, commission meeting and, and tell them all about They're it. They're going to need mm -hmm. plans, probably. That would be the next step. Yeah, well, that, that's what I'm wondering too, Jim. Are we before we even go to Public Works, though, we're going to need at least a, 
a sketch. We're going to no, I've got that already. I've already got Mr. Trundak had done one for me. With oh, okay. The little parking places. Really, I'd actually done, you know, got right up. This was actually completed well over six or seven months ago. It's just the other okay. troubles we've been having at the port. So what you need now is a motion to we move it along motion. and send it to public works. Right. Is we that need right? approval here, and then we can approval to do it from this board, and then we go get the permitting part you know, for the field work and stuff like that. And I'm not even, not even saying it's permitting, but they, they just want it to go through public works. And I also, when I was talking to Mr. David Birchfield, I think his name, Birch. he was, Birch, he was saying, um, because I thought it might be nice if we could get a trash can, mm -hmm. that has to be worked out with the um, public works. But well. it would be possible for public works to see this and say, no, we're not gonna proceed with this, right? Um, I, do, I don't know. I, I guess what I'm wondering is how, is this the last time we'll be voting on this? We vote to approve it and then it's, it's it wheels was for up? Us, or, as far as I can tell. As far as I can tell, I'd have to look or, closer. Or are you going to have to go back to them? Or they'll you know, process we, the request. We haven't voted there. on this at all. Right. right we right, vote right. for it, then it goes to the city, and then we won't have to mess with the city again as far as I can tell. And I'm not even sure, again, based on the actual work being done, which is just filling stuff that's already there damaged, that it's a, a real permit, that it's something, it's a project going on in the city, and they want to know about it and give their little stamp and perhaps add a few things or... Right, and what was the estimated cost of this again? Um, the estimated cost was between, um, it was between 25, no more than 35,000, 25 to 35,000, depending on how much of the, um, and when they start, because of course it's disappearing now, how much of the aggregate they had to lay down to. And that number came from Taylor, from Mike? No, no. Uh, Taylor just did the sketch. I had a, a meeting with the FDOT directly. Mm -hmm. and I gotta say, uh -huh. Incredibly impressed I am about that form of government. Um, I'm amazed. But uh, literally, they said they would rent it to us for one dollar a year, and all we needed was to come back with a legal description of the property mm -hmm. that we're renting, which they said they would write that up for us. Okay. And uh, then get the FDO, FDOT permit, which they also said you did not need a per, uh, engineer for that. It's going to be done by secretary. I'd be in favor of moving forward with this, but could we wait until we hear a concrete number from Taylor of what it would cost? Because they're ultimately going to be Taylor's the ones who are... They're not involved in it. They won't be doing any of the no, engineering? No, I'm saying I went straight to the FDOT. I brought in what uh, Mr. Trundike said, and I asked him, I said, what else do I need? So who's going to be contracting with the contract? Direct, I mean, we go... Our secretary, well, I've got the quotes that I've already got in, but to tell you the truth, I'd... This amount of money, we don't have to like bid it out and do all these things, but I would still like to make sure that we're getting the very lowest price. Right, but who's going to be like managing the construction site? Uh, don't we need we the engineering firm to do that? Taylor Engineer doesn't manage the construction site. Well, at least show up sometimes. <laughs> so, I mean, what I would recommend is that we go out there. That's what the good thing about that um, secretary treasurer before a check gets signed to go out to bill is somebody on this board has seen it. And that's another good thing about having an executive director, somebody with real dredging port experience that can can do these inspections because we do not get inspections from our from Taylor. Okay, are we having discussion on this? If so, I'd like to put my two cents worth in. This is unnecessary. It's something we do not need to do. It's something we're getting into where the cost can be much, much more than what uh, Commissioner Flowers is quoting. We have no word from engineer, no word from anybody professional. Yeah. And I think this it's unneeded because people use it anyway. It's free. It doesn't cost us anything. I, I live at Volano. I drive by there every single day. And at high tides, full moon high tides, it's covered in water. And my contention is that you're going to have to put so much fill dirt in there to get it up above the, the uh, full moon high tide or hurricane tide that it's going to be way too expensive for us to do. We're not do. trying to do that, actually, so the people I talked to who I mean, really, who lay the aggregate and know what they're doing. we do not need it. Well, we I'm just trying to answer it. your question, is that it's, it's designed to perk. Uh, so water coming, you have to design it so it's going to be flooded in water, obviously, and that it can perk down. Well, we're just... I'm just giving you an answer to your question, would, to your suggestion. Would the folks you bid be willing to come in and talk to us? Oh, sure. Okay. Absolutely. Would, absolutely no problem. Could we go ahead and table it until we had a chance to talk with them directly then? I tell you, Mr. Brown, y'all do whatever you want to, but I've been working on this for, we're, we're a year for this thing right now, and all it is is a simple, easy repair that requires a secretary calling in to do the permit. Oh, I understand. If you but want this to is, table it, that's fine. Sure, this is something that the port, you know, the port, but it's just, this is uncharted it's just territory another, for us, though, right. you know what I mean? Normally, we would sit here and let Taylor handle 
struggle. And I, I understand that this is a new way of doing things, and it's potentially interesting. But and I'm not saying we don't need an, an employee. I really believe we do. Out of an excess of caution, I'd like to yeah. have as much on the record as we can before we before we proceed. That's my two cents. So if you don't want to vote on it today, and this has been scheduled for a vote twice and been tabled twice, okay. I can't stop Any further discussion But I can tell you that. if we don't get this done, we're going to have, by, it'll be winter time and another year we'll have come and gone and people doing that sad thing that they're trying to do with their kayaks down okay, there. Okay, what about item B, follow up with Matt on zip ties for sewage tanks? Sure, so uh, Sergeant Underwood is not here anymore, unfortunately. Um, so uh, the question was, would we uh, as a board be able to potentially write an ordinance uh, that would uh, require uh, folks with MSDs, with marine sanitation devices, uh, you know, on their boats to have a port designated zip tie or some other type of locking device on their MSD while they're in port water. Um, it's a two-part jurisdictional question. One is, can we write any sort of regulation that has anything to do with MSDs at all? And two, could we write that specific regulation? We can write regulation on MSDs generally. Other jurisdictions do it. The Coast Guard and the Clean Water Act, so the EPA, have established a baseline of regulations about MSDs. But uh, other jurisdictions, you know, states and localities are empowered to create tighter restrictions. You can't loosen it, obviously. You can't say that you can ignore the EPA. But you can make it tighter. However, the specific question of whether we can require locks is an open one, and I have not been able to find a single jurisdiction that requires them. Um, I have a call in to the Coast Guard and the EPA as well. I'm supposed to actually speak with an EPA attorney tomorrow uh, about this issue, but the short answer is it's still an open question. Um, I wish Josh was here because I did find some other jurisdictions that have some other uh, some other uh, sort of tighter regimes than we have that could be interesting and that we could potentially achieve through uh, a, a regulation as well. Um, you know, uh, the, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Catalina Island out in California. So Avalon is sort of the, the, the district that Catalina is in. It used to have terrible, terrible water quality problems many years ago. Um, and they created an inspection regime that essentially says the second you enter Avalon waters, you are, uh, you are consenting to inspection. And you are also consenting to having a dye tab put in um, automatically. You can't get over that by, you know, just keeping the head locked, which is, you know, what you could do here. You have to have a dye tab inserted uh, as soon as you get in. And if you are found in violation of their MSD, you know, if you are dumping uh, sewage of any kind, if you're found in violation, you're barred from their waters for a year. And if they catch you doing it intentionally, you know, messing with a die tab or otherwise trying to skirt the rules, if they can prove intent, two years, you're banned. You can't come back. Um, however, having said that, no, no evidence of zip ties being used or any, any, um, any particular uh, locking requirements. So I'm waiting to hear back from the Coast Guard and the EPA on that. You know, if you check the, um, the city's harbor management plan, you'll find a legal clause in there that says that if you come in here and get on a mooring ball, you're consenting to... Um, uh, the city staff being able to go into your boat and do things so we know That's that right. it can be done. Also, it may be approachable by, instead of trying to regulate something directly with the boat, or regulate the marinas. Well, so the, the problem, the specific the problem with the zip ties is that um, the Coast Guard, in their regulations, specifies that there are a number of different locking possibilities that they consider to be acceptable. And the question is, if we were to say, oh, well, actually several of those are not acceptable, I think we, there's, a, there's a potential for us to be preempted there. The Coast Guard can say, no, 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 we said that all of these are acceptable. So you cannot say only a zip tie with our insignia on it is acceptable. So I'm waiting to hear back from them on that. I, I want some guidance on that. There are, like I said, there are other avenues to tighten things up around here. We could follow the way that Avalon does it. Newport Beach, California does that. Oh, but um, talk, Marathon, I mean, they're serious because they mm -hmm. have really bad... Marathon work. and Longboat Key both have similarly uh, intense inspection regimes. And there's some places up in Connecticut and Maine that do it as well. But nothing with zip ties. But I'll, I'll have a more concrete answer hopefully next time we meet. Thank you. Steve, do you have any input on this? Lieutenant Steve Zukowski, Fish and Wildlife Commission. Um, you're right, Commissioner. I'm a former boarding officer at the Coast Guard Reserve. If the door to the head is locked, that qualifies as secured. Right. So, if you're looking at that, 
you're, the, you know, I don't know if you're going to be able to go more restrictive on a specific code of federal regulations in terms of a mechanism. Right. The the tie t the die tablet idea is a good idea. I have some experience with that. Mm -hmm. From some, we uh, had some officers down in Volusia County that would conduct at sea boardings of boats down there, and they used that, and they found out, boop, it was automatically going overboard. Mm -hmm. So if you've got some sort of precedent from another marina, some more jurisdiction, that might be something that the legal people might want to look at and right. be able to do. And I think that's probably, you know, I think that's probably going to be a better, I mean, that's also going to be readily visible mm -hmm. if it's going on. Right. So you will have a, uh, you will, you, for lack of a better word, you'll probably cause it to aborting at that point, even though you don't need it mm -hmm. on that. Um, so, yes, uh, Coast Guard... Up in Sector Jacksonville, I presume you've been talking with them. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they may punt it back to you, mm -hmm. is my experience with legal and Coast Guard up in Sector Jacks, because that's where I retired as reserve is from. Right. So don't be surprised if you do not get a definitive answer. I won't be. I'm not really expecting anything okay. definitive. The thing that I want is, uh, or what I want is for them to at least say that they don't, they can't tell me definitively that it's not a problem, and then we can okay. proceed from there. Okay. We'll see. Mr. Right. Brown. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Flounder regulations, Commissioner Way. Found. Just give me a second on this. I just please. need to know for personal reasons. All right. This is this email came out. Uh, we have FWC has quarterly commission meetings. I think the last one was July. Was up in Jacksonville. We've had them here in St. Augustine, Brookout Village, recently. It was proposed at the meeting. They took input from biologists and also anglers, shareholders. The current recreational flounder size limit is 12 inches total length, 10 per person per day is the bag limit. They're proposing a few things. To reduce the bag limit from 5 to 10, to increase the size, which is consistent with other states. You said it was 10 now. They want to reduce it to 5. Okay. Right. That's the proposal. That's consistent with other states. Um, to increase the size limit from currently 12 inches to 14 inches, that's consistent with other states or more consistent, I should say, as someone who's been up and down the Atlantic coast, you know, the last few years. And, and I grew up fishing in New Jersey and Connecticut. Um, and then uh, also proposal to implement a month-long closure for November each year. Uh, the commercial vessel limit will be 100 fish per boat. During the month of November, the commercial vessel limit will, would be 50 pounds. Per boat, and also extending FWC regulations into federal waters. That's an interesting thing. I can talk about that for hours, but basically right now there is no fishery management plan for flounder in federal waters. So what happens is when we get people diving <clears throat> off some of these wrecks 15 miles out and they just are pulling up every flounder they can, uh, if, if they've come or gone from Florida port, um, then we, we charge them on the state, state level because there is no plan. So what happened, these were uh, agreed upon at the July commission meeting. At the October commission meeting, they will be um, voted on to codify and make them final. So if that's the case, then it will probably implement it July 1, uh, excuse me, January 1 of 2021. Does that answer yep. your question? Okay, very good. Anything else, folks? You. All right, thanks. Thank you. So Matt, you want that on the agenda for next month? Uh, yes, sir. That would be great. Okay. Uh, public comment again. Five minutes each. If anyone wish to speak, you got the timer. Yeah. Matt, I'm putting the zip ties on here for next. Perfect. Thank you. First of all, Mr. Chairman, you're not the chairman. I agree with Commissioner Flowers. Uh, there needs to be an election at this meeting to pick someone temporarily. I don't know who told you or why you would have imagined that you'd automatically become the chairman because Mr. Benjamin, who was illegally serving, resigned. What authority do you have to make that ruling? That's more like a UK. It's more like un-American. Furthermore, on the arbitration clause, I wish y'all would reconsider and knock out the whole paragraph 25. The mediation stuff... You're supposed to meet in the office of your contractor in Jacksonville? Obviously, it was written by your contractor in Jacksonville and not that lawyer who 
as far as I'm concerned, just needs to be gone right now. I'm glad he resigned. And he and the chairman made some rather, I think, um, unacceptable statements about arbitration, showing profound lack of knowledge. For instance, you're analogizing Mr. Non-Chairman to real estate contracts. Really? This is the government. It is not a real estate contract. Are you that unsophisticated as the Republican County Chair that you think that we should have cram down arbitration that you can cram it down the government's throat? Are you kidding me? That's just wrong. And then counsel, unlearned counsel, his statement about how something had been going on for 18 years with illegal spending, as Commissioner Flowers called it. There's not an estoppel based on illegality. And on that proposition, let me call you your attention to the eloquent words of Justice Gorsuch. By the way, that's how you actually pronounce his name. It's Gorsuch. They ask at the confirmation hearing how he pronounced his name. One of the Democrats on like day three, how do you pronounce your name? But when you're not listening to people, you don't pronounce their names right. When you're not listening to people, you interrupt them. And that is so wrong, Mr. Chairman. But anyway, Justice Gorsuch, in a case called uh, McGirt, involving the state of Oklahoma, said, as far as the rule of law is concerned, it doesn't matter if you've been doing it illegally for a hundred years. So your dumb old resolution that somebody wrote and passed in ancient times, 18 years ago, doesn't persuade me, doesn't persuade the IG, it doesn't persuade the, the AG, doesn't persuade Commissioner Flowers. That's, that's not law. You have a resolution, really. And you let people go and spend money, really. I think under 112.313, Commissioner Flowers would be well within her rights to refer Commissioner Way um, for the violation of having a contract and approving a contract with somebody that he does business with. Uh, speaking of David Bircham, we caught him doing that. David Bircham, the city planning and zoning director a couple years ago, had a contract with a company that was asking for approval for 15 homes on the uh, west side of Riberia in Lincolnville. And he, it went to the Ethics Commission. There was an opinion, and they said, no, you can't do that. So he recused himself. Commissioner Way, you need to recuse yourself on your business associates. You shouldn't be calling them on behalf of the district. And we shouldn't have people making decisions based on good old boy considerations like, he's my buddy. Now let me get back to what I wanted to talk before I was so rudely told earlier today that somehow under 286.0114 I didn't have the right to talk on individual agenda items. I raised the issue in opening comment and nobody picked up on it about the GTM NER. Would you please invite the GTM NER to make a presentation? Because there are now 3,346 and 44,100 acre added to the GTM NER. And again, the reason why this GTM NER was split down the middle for 22, 20, 22 years is because burgers in the city of St. Augustine didn't want the federal government telling them what to do with our boats. That's, that's what Bill Lennon told me. Now, we need to plan, as I, as I said to you all last year, we need to apply the seven generation test. You're not doing that here. You're not talking about global warming. And when you look at that idiotic statement by the accountant, your accountant in, in the uh, audit didn't even list the perils of ocean level rise and global warming as something to be done, dealt with. The, but they did insert COVID-19. I guess they, they do that by rote. But Mr. Chairman, you're not the chairman. You need to have a, a, an election right now, or else you're in violation of Florida law and Robert's Rules of Order. Nobody named you chairman. And Barry Mark Benjamin arrogated to himself at his first meeting saying, oh, I'm the chairman now. There's not a ladder here. This is not the Republican Party here. You need to treat people with dignity, respect, and consideration, Mr. Non-Chairman. And you're out of order. I rule you out of order and the contempt of Ed. Mr. Slavin, I would give anything not to be sitting in this chair. <laughs> okay, anybody, other member of the, of the public? Okay, comments by commissioners. Commissioner Way? Yeah, I got a comment. I want to repeat. I don't know Joe Bacon. My company has not done one penny of business with Joe Bacon. I told you that last time. And when it comes to being wrong, you are infatigable. 
Well, that way an that's investigation could tell that. What's that? That's why we need an investigation. Investi Investi investigation. Look it up. Finish first. And yeah. then you'll no, have I'm your, sorry. You'll I'm have sorry. don't know him from Adam. I couldn't pick him up. He walked well, into this room. You talked to him twice on the phone. That is no one's. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not supposed to interrupt you there. Go ahead. No, it's okay. Um, but like I said, when it comes to being wrong, you are infatigable. That's not a word. It is now. <laughs> Nothing wrong about Barry not living on that boat. Barry, right? is that complete <laughs> your remarks? Uh, yeah, that, that's just Thanks. that's just so absurd. It's, it's laughable. No, oh, and by the way, I will not recuse myself on anything that comes before this board. Okay, well, that's, that is the point. Again, that is the point. My comment then is, okay. in this book, the ethics commission told us to keep an eye out, and if we had a question, we should file a report. So, Mr. The Brown, point, I wasn't finished. Can I finish? Comments. Can I finish? I wasn't finished. I thought you had. I'm sorry. I had not. So the point I was trying to make was to bring to the whole reason that you cut me off earlier. I was giving that timeline of what occurred with marker three to request that we think about it and make a motion. I'm just going to make a motion at the next meeting that we file a complaint as a board and we vote on it, knowing that you will vote it down. So I just wanted to finish the statement I was interrupted earlier. I brought all that information to the board for y'all to think about it because at the next meeting I'm going to make a motion that we write a letter together instead of just me. And you can say no all you want, but I wanted to present the facts as I knew them for you to consider. That's all. Thank you. Commissioner Brown? No more comments. Um, I would like to bring up something. Uh, <clears throat> we received a letter this week from our attorney. Uh, to read it into the record, dear Vice Chairman Rivers, this letter is to advise you that I have decided to resign from my position as attorney for the district effective with the October 2020 regular meeting. I have had the pleasure <clears throat> of serving the board and the interests of the commissioners and stakeholders of the district since 2009 and feel the time is correct to take leave of the position <clears throat> prior to seating the new board in November. My suggestion, and this is one that <clears throat> I do want to follow through with, my suggestion <clears throat> is that the board authorize Secretary Treasurer Kemper to advertise for those attorneys interested in the position to appear at the regular meeting in October 2020 to meet the board and present themselves. This is something we did after our last attorney resigned and we chose uh, Attorney Bud's belt. Um, uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> Hiring an attorney is not governed by the procurement laws for state agencies or the Consultants Competitive Negotiations Act. So the board may <clears throat> simply discuss and vote for the best candidate. I certainly hope this will not inconvenience you or any board member. I thank the board for their understanding of this matter. <clears throat> so at least you'll go ahead and do the advertising. Wait for a minute. What's public comment on if you're making a decision? 286.0114. At least. To have a statewide advertisement in the Florida Bar Journal. I'm sorry, you're out of order. No, I'm not. Under 286.0114, you're, you're out of order. order. I would like to speak. You're out of order. You're not even the chairman. <laughs> at least. Just would you do the advertising? Yes. And at least, that's it. At least can I ask you about that? The meeting is adjourned. No, it's not. Ah, would you please make sure? There was not sure, a motion. She's talking. Would you make sure that's advertised somewhere besides just the St. Augustine paper? Hey, like part of our journal is a standard. I'll entertain. Jacksonville, Gainesville, something like that. Part of our journal. Yeah, I mean. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I second that. All the favor say aye. 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 aye.